But imagine a country like ours with all the problems we have and uh, the money involved. Definitely it's a reason uh, of concern for Kenyans. We have been trying to fight corruption since the time we passed the law on corruption, anti-corruption, mm -hmm. the International Convention on, on, uh, Against Corruption. We have failed and we have admitted in public that we have uh, actually failed to uh, curb corruption. What we can do is try and minimize, try and curb the incidence of corruption. But you can see now this coming out in the open mm -hmm. uh, is of concern. And uh, I would like to agree with Wandai that this is not the first time. We are hearing about money being snatched away. Years ago, we, we heard about, uh, we had a big case in Kenya and there were even extradition cases uh, on former managing director of the Kenya Power mm -hmm. and uh, one MP, uh, or was he a minister, Chris Okemo. And uh, some of those cases went quiet. We don't know what, what has happened uh, in, in the last years. Right. The other day we saw the golden bag just coming out of nowhere. Skeletons in our wardrobes coming out. So I think there is a lot of concerning information here. The president has come out to say that it will bring in transparency, which is a good thing. This is what we need when you are fighting corruption. You want to, to be as transparent as you can. You want to shine the light on those who are corrupt, those who are immoral. But I think it is a war that we must fight as Kenyans if we are going to make this country what it should be. Okay, not to defend what, what we are seeing on the headlines today, but I think even when it broke out on CNN, we saw that there were other presidents involved. And I think the, the, the most I remember is the president of, of Russia. Mm -hmm. And they were giving such details of who and who has been involved. So I think we just wait for, for, for the you know, details to come out. Right. And uh, probably from there on, this is when we can now, as Kenyans, say, okay, this is our problem. So how the leaders will tell us, how do we go about it? And, uh, and Kenyans, of course, at this time are struggling with the, with the debt, the national debt, as uh, Sholei has said, mm -hmm. it's in trillions. And uh, you know, we, we have a budget that is underfunded in almost every sector. Our budget is so underfunded. Today we are here discussing elections, and I'm sure we are going to discuss how IBC does not have enough money and has not had enough money to carry out its activities. Until right. they, they started the, the mass voter registration yesterday, we didn't hear much about what they've been doing. So I think uh, it is quite disheartening that uh, a country like ours still developing, that we, we can uh, be saddled with uh, other problems other than what we already have, the national debt, uh, a struggling economy, uh, health care that is just a burden, and especially now uh, that we have been faced with the pandemic. Right. It hasn't been easy for the normal, uh, for the, the, the Mwanainchi mm -hmm. uh, to navigate the, 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 the pandemic. And uh, yes, we, we have a myriad of problems. We can't okay. finish them now. Okay, yeah. and uh, just to in introduce Senator Ledamo Lekina from Narok County. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, sorry for the sh <coughs> short or long journey. <laughs> and uh, we are talking about, should I say, the Pandora's box that was opened uh, Sunday evening uh, about the Pandora Papers and uh, the details coming out and the president saying that um, this opens a new window for um, people to come out clean. And he says, let me just uh, read the quote. Where is it? Uh, where did I see it? That he's talking about... Um, he says that he respond um, when he gets back in detail. Um, well, I'll I find the quote, but he's talking about, um, yes, that is, the Pandora Papers and subsequent follow-up audits will lift that veil of secrecy and darkness for those who cannot explain their assets or wealth. And I want us to begin there, Senator Olekina. What does the president mean? I think what, uh, precisely what the president means is that uh, before you throw stones, mm -hmm. you need to also remember that you also live in a glass house. Um, I know, I personally know a lot of Kenyans, including very prominent people, who have uh, accounts in different countries. Mauritius is one of them. Mm -hmm. If you go to Mauritius and you go to the register of companies, you'll be shocked 
and how many Kenyans have registered their businesses there, how much are storing their money in Mauritius. Others even own businesses in this country, but uh, those businesses which are held in this country are registered in Mauritius. And I think uh, this is well, not the first time. What are these? I mean, businessmen. Um, and I think from, just from what the president said is that it, it will encourage transparency because everyone should be able to declare and to be able to show where they, they have been able to accumulate their wealth. You know, there's so many people in this country who have grown up outside the country. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not the first time that, uh, that doesn't mean that they don't have any businesses abroad, you know. And um, the Kenyatta family is known to have been in business for many, many, many years. And I think there's no law per se that mm -hmm. says that you cannot be able to keep your money outside the country. If you are keeping your money outside the country, before you became president. It doesn't mean that when you become now president, you go and bring all that money out of the country, into the country. So there are things that we need to clarify. The president is very clear in what he's saying. And uh, this is not the first time that we're reading about uh, money being held in tax haven. We had the Panama Papers, which clearly uh, you know, showed us Kenyans, including sons of the former owners of the Imperial Bank. You know, they own a lot of money outside the country. So I think we have to look at this thing very critically. We cannot just jump and say, oh, this is illegal, this is immoral. But, 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 but because she raises a question of morality and, of course... Who is she? <laughs> She's a woman representative for Wasingishu. Yeah, then say a woman representative for Wasingishu. Sorry, you know, standing orders in parliament, you cannot just say she. You have to say the honorable woman representative from Washington. We are at Citizen TV Studios. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and, yes. And the question I'm asking is because she's raised a question of morality and she also raises As the. Uh, mm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, she highlights the plight that Kenyans are going through. Yeah. I mean, one would think um, that resources, Kenyan resources should be of benefit, should circulate within a country. It doesn't stop you as a businessman to invest wherever you want. But how do you reconcile that? How do you approach you see, Kenyans and tell them that your leader, X or Y, yeah. has property outside this country that is not of benefit to the rest of you? I like the way you brought it up in your introductory remark. You said Kenyan resources. How sure are you that those were Kenyan resources? You know, I might own a property abroad. You know, did I acquire that property with the money that I got in Kenya or when I lived abroad? So really, you have to be able to differentiate between the two. I'm not saying that it should be, as a president, you should have property <coughs> outside. But before you became president, you were a businessman. You know, you, were, you grew up in a family that did business. We know very well that President Kenyatta grew up in the States. And I'm not defending the president here, but I'm just being pragmatic mm -hmm. in the sense that if you lived in the U.S., and you saved your money. I lived in the U.S. I have an account in the U.S., you know, because I lived there for 20 years, you know. And the fact we have to, you have, we have to differentiate the two. And I, I like the statement made by the president that this will enhance transparency mm -hmm. because everyone should be able to tell where they've made their money. No, no one has stopped you from saving your money from another country. You can be saving your money there for interest. In terms, you, if we now pass a law in Parliament, and I think we've been dilly darling in passing a law, if we pass a law in Parliament that prohibits any leader from owning any properties abroad, then we could be talking about something completely different. But as it is, I want people to show me where it is illegal or immoral for any leader, not only the president, to own property abroad. Mm -hmm. You have children, you have relatives. Mamangina Kenyatta started doing business donkey years ago. You know, it is not just the other day. So we have to be very pragmatic. We cannot just be emotional, you know, or sensational How when it comes to discussing is? issues about, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know. <laughs> okay, think about we, that. <laughs> no, no, let me just finish what I'm saying is that we should not be, we should not be emotional or, sens or sensational right. when it comes to discussing issues of uh, properties. If you are now telling me, and this <laughs> is why I'm very happy that uh, my colleague here is, uh, is coming up with a law in terms of, uh, for, uh, you know, corruption. Mm -hmm. If you're telling me that governors today, who we know just the other day, 
you know uh, some of them who lived in apartments in Westlands or who lived in apartments in Parklands you know end up uh, owning huge properties in Karen if you are telling me that those governors own properties abroad then I'd be very keen in following to see where they got the money to buy those properties from yet before they became governors who are living in Pangani in an apartment. Wow, okay. Um, Honorable Pio, as you raise your point there, I'd also wish that you reflect on the cons consequence of this because we live in a country that corruption is such a serious issue. And what then stops someone to steal public resources? I'm not saying, I'm not now talking about the president's property, but what stops another Kenyan, whether a leader or whatever, or a businessman, to steal public property and push it away to those tax havens. You, you know, Sam, the problem we have in this country uh, is that we want to politicize everything. You know, the moment you start politicizing this issue, then you lose the point. Uh, why do I say so? Uh, I've heard from my sister here that uh, since uh, recently the CS Matiangi disclosed to the properties owned by the deputy president. Therefore, it is in order that uh, the president also goes ahead and uh, the, uh, uh, discloses his properties. You see, that is missing the point. Mm -hmm. The properties that C.S. Matango was talking about are those properties that are owned by the deputy president mm -hmm. and are being guarded, uh, supposedly, by the police. I don't, I don't know if the Kenyan police are guarding uh, the, the money in those uh, uh, tax havens. But that, that, that aside, that aside, mm -hmm. We have also been told that you needed to disclose this in the wealth declaration forms. <coughs> Who has seen uh, whose wealth declaration forms? Those forms, as far as I am aware, have not been made public, including mine. Okay, and therefore nobody knows. Should they? Nobody knows whether the president has disclosed to those properties in his wealth declaration forms. Should Therefore, they, should they would, be disclosed? Would be engaging in, the law doesn't provide for that. Yes, it would be engaging in mere speculation. But more importantly, mm -hmm. in a capitalist society such as ours, it is not wrong for one to aspire to grow his wealth portfolio. Mm -hmm. Okay? And the more you grow your wealth portfolio, I believe you want to also uh, diversify and uh, also uh, uh, spare the risks. But, but, uh, and, 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 and but, but the question is, yes. uh, and I remember watching on Monday report last evening, and some of the reasons why people may put money or resources in such tax havens is for the sake of stability, security, to ensure that political I'm, I'm coming to that. instability does not affect it. But how do you stop corrupt persons? from stealing public resources and pushing them to such a situation that they'll never really be reached. I'll come to that. And, 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 therefore, and therefore, there's even no evidence yet that those monies that are stashed out there mm -hmm. are not generating profits, which are again brought back into the country. There's no evidence. Nobody has done an investigation, an inquiry to establish that these monies are stashed out there and they're not helping Kenyans. But more importantly, if you want to deal with the corruption, you don't deal with corruption at the end, tail end. You deal with it at the source. So you can't say that because there are people who are stealing money and taking it out of the country, everybody else should not take the money out of the country. That is not proper, really. Uh, uh, the, most, the most important thing to do is to deal with corruption at the source. Stop uh, 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 seeing loopholes through which people would want to would, would, would siphon out public funds mm -hmm. at the source. Mm -hmm. But I go again encourage people who want to engage in international business People with money who want to invest across the, can across the world, allow them to do so as long as they do it in a legal manner. Mm -hmm. Yes, and there's no, there's, no, there's no obligation on the part of any Honorable Pio, of course, it's, it's yes. not far-fetched. It's actually something that has happened, or uh, there's an allegation that it, ha it happened with the case that she referred to about um, the former <coughs> Kenya power leadership and uh, former cabinet minister. And I'm saying, when, when, and, when, when and if it happens, Deal with it. Okay. It cannot be. It cannot be a, a matter of yes. Yes. All right. So, horrible boss, where do we go from here? Okay. I think we need to put this in context. Mm -hmm. When we talk that many Kenyans have had accounts abroad, each case is judged based on different on its own circumstances. Mm -hmm. In the case of Okemo and Gishuru, it was money that had been corruptly earned and then paid out in. Uh, overseas. Mm -hmm. that, that was, that's a different matter altogether. Mm -hmm. Here, we are talking about a public officer where we are required by law to declare our wealth. As Senator Ledama says, it is not illegal 
for any of us to have accounts overseas. The issue is, as a public officer, when I put it down in my wealth declaration form, I should indicate that I have the following properties, the following monies in a Kenyan account, in this account, a, a Mauritius account in Mauritius or in, the, in Europe and so on. That is what we are required to do. Mm -hmm. That wealth declaration form does not become public until such time as somebody is being charged with corruption or so and so. But the practice in Kenya has been, we have seen our presidential candidates mm -hmm. declare their wealth. I, and I think if you look at the presidential debate uh, running up to the 2013 uh, presidential elections, uh, Uhuru Kenyatta did declare his wealth. He said, I own, I don't know, land in Taveta, these companies, and so on. He actually declared it during the presidential debate. Right. So what he declared as a presidential candidate is in fact public. Uh, Kalonzo Musioka has also declared, uh, did declare his wealth, I think, also during uh, those discussions and their quest for it. The issue then, even when you say that I have proper, uh, uh, bank accounts abroad or properties abroad, what usually as a public officer is the question is, where is the source of that wealth? Which is what Senator Ledama is referring to, is that in the case of those uh, governors you're talking about, right. the issue there will be the source of the wealth. Now, let's come back to these Pandora's papers. Those facts have been stated on, on the wealth owned by the president's family. The question will be, I said, as a person, Okemo, Ogishuru have never on the, been on the forefront fighting corruption. Neither have they said they want to be leaders who are corruption free and they want to clean the country of corruption. So, but in the case of the president, it is a case of, is it called preaching, preaching water and drinking wine? Eh? So that is the case. Him stands, we put him at a higher moral gauge because he has been discussing this there's a question, personally. There's a point that was raised by himself. Honorable Pio. As you continue the response, reflect on it, because he says that so far there's no evidence to show that whatever is in those accounts is uh, proceeds of crime or proceeds of corruption. No, no, that's, why, that's, why I'm, that's exactly why I'm trying to differentiate it. There is the issue of having the property, owning properties abroad and so on, which is legal. But there will be a question of the source of the wealth. That mm -hmm. is, an, when you talk about corruption, he has a, a case, I think you have a bill in parliament relating to corruption. He, it goes actually to the source. That is what, that's how corruption investigation is done. But in this case, nobody is discussing the source. What we are discussing now is that it has been internationally um, uh, research, I mean, research by journalists and this information has come out that various heads of state across the world have these properties. Heads of state actually are held at a higher moral okay. uh, gauge than anybody else. All right. And that's why we said and the, morality is not documented. It's not a law. It is what is expected of them, especially when the person themselves have said this is how I want to be judged and this is how I want to run my my government. All right. So yes, it would be. We, we are I, I, interested I, 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 on I hear him. You, boss. And, and, the, and the president has been clear about a transparent. I mean, a scrutiny of people's wealth. So it's good now that we know what is abroad. He had told us a bit of what he has in the country. Maybe now he can come and complete okay. the wealth declaration. Just, just, uh, oh, oh, just, uh, all right. I need us to take in, a short in, break. In Twenty seconds. I think we have to differentiate between being a beneficiary and being the person who has been able to acquire that wealth. Because I've listened to CNN, I've listened to international medias describing this wealth. Some of this wealth places these individuals, like the president, as a beneficiary. Nothing says that I cannot, as a parent, I cannot list my children as beneficiaries of my wealth. Does that mean that my children are the ones who have acquired that wealth? In fact, uh, lawyers make it very difficult. You are one of them. It makes it very difficult for even um, ordinary citizen to know what you know they, they you know what uh, what they have been uh, bequeathed by their parents or by their relatives and friends. So I think if we are able to differentiate clearly between what has been acquired by the president since he became president mm -hmm. and he decided to touch that money abroad, then and what has been bequeathed to him right. by his family then we can be we can be we can be very open and uh, you know you know clear well, on well, these matters all right all right senator lekina we have so much information that you do not know
the conversation continues, but of course it's an important uh, point for a country to have this discussion. After the break, we continue with matters money, this time round, politics of money. Parliament, that is the National Assembly, sometime last week uh, voted against the Campaign Financing Act regulations that uh, would have uh, made it easier for IABC to regulate campaign financing. They also said that the spending limits cannot uh, work. Never mind, they had been gazetted by IABC on the 9th of August as per the law. So do they have the force of law or are they lost just because of the decision by Parliament? We have that conversation after the break and also asking that question, would a poorer candidate, that is who is not of um, the means, um, like the wealthy politicians, would they make it through the ballot? We seek the answers after the break.